Hello friends and welcome to another Dirt Report with Techman Pat. This week we've got a jam-packed lineup. Amazon Satellite Internet Project gets a new name and a new shot at SpaceX. Australia's internet finally puts the pedal down and zooms up the global speed ranks. Telstra, Optus and TPG join forces like the Avengers of Telco to fix emergency call woes. And a sneaky spyware campaign has been snooping on Samsung phones. So make sure you like and subscribe, let's get started by rolling the intro. First up, Project Kuiper, Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink. That just got a rebrand. So say hello to Amazon Leo. That's L-E-O as in low earth orbit. In other words, not named after Leonardo DiCaprio. Amazon has already yeeted over 150 satellites and plans about 3,200 in total to blanket the globe in internet. So in short, Jeff Bezos is building his own Starlink competitor, aiming to beam fast internet to underserved areas and to one-up Elon Musk in space. Early partners are on board from JetBlue for in-flight Wi-Fi to Ambient Co here in Australia. And pricing and launch dates are still TBA, but Amazon says once enough satellites are up, service will roll out. The space internet race is officially on watch out, Starlink. Amazon's coming for you. Let me know below who will be switching as soon as it goes live. Next up, NBN speeds up and good news on the home front. Australia's internet has finally hit the turbo boost. According to Speedtest's global index, we've jumped to 48th in the world for fixed broadband services, a big leap from a woeful 82nd place earlier this year. How did it happen? Well, credit goes to NBN Co's recent upgrades. In September, NBN launched the Accelerate Great program and supercharged many connections overnight. 100 megabits plans got boosted to 500, to 50 megabits plans jumped to 750, and they even rolled out a new top tier 2 gigabits per second plan for fiber users. It's like NBN finally pressed that nitro button. As a result, average download speed surged in October, pulling our global ranking out of the basement. Now, 40th place isn't gold medal territory, but it sure beats 82nd. We've crawled out of the buffer zone. So enjoy those faster downloads, Australia. We're itching our way up to the broadband world. Now, put your hands up on those who will be actually spending over $200 per month on those two gigabit speeds. <laughs> Next up, telcos team up for triple zero trouble. Now, here's something you don't see every day. Telstra, Optus, and TPG joining forces. To my dismay, they're not forming a mega telco Voltron. They're actually collaborating to ensure you can call triple zero in an emergency. After some scary outages and failed emergency calls, the big three got tired of waiting for the regulator to step in. So they're creating a shared naughty list, a database of phone models that struggle to dial 000 reliably. If a certain phone keeps failing to connect to triple zero when it should, all the carriers will know and can warn users or even block the device if necessary. It's a rare show of unity among rivals, but when lives are at stake and after the recent Optus triple zero meltdown, even telcos will band together. This begs the question, is it a publicity stunt or real effort? More on the list once it's live, but one example, Telstra discovered around 70 older Samsung phone models that wouldn't switch to a working network during an emergency call. These phones kept trying to use Vodafone's shutdown 3G signal to reach triple zero. Not exactly helpful, obviously. So to fix this, Telstra and Optus notified affected customers. Fair enough. About 60 of those Samsung models can be fixed with a software update. Thumbs up, I guess, but 11 are so out of date they need to be replaced. Users have got 28 days to update or upgrade their handset. After that, those devices will be blocked from the network for safety reasons. Now, the new industry wide device registry should speed up spotting and fixing these problems across all providers. So, the takeaway here is if your phone is a dinosaur, make sure it's not the naughty list. It could literally save your life or somebody else's. But let's be honest, these numbers are pretty small. 11 phones? I'm sure we can organize a GoFundMe. Or the telcos could do a really nice Christmas Prezi. Much better PR that way anyway. Lastly, speaking of Samsung, some newer Galaxy phones have been under attack by spyware nasty called Landfall. Security researchers uncovered this commercial grade spyware campaign that quietly targeted Samsung devices for months. 
puts a new spin on why you should keep your older ones instead of getting the latest one. It exploited a zero-day vulnerability, a hidden software flaw in Samsung's image processing. Attackers hid malicious code inside image files in the DNG photo format, so if you see that, don't open it. It was sent via WhatsApp and many other messengers. Simply receiving one of these booby trap pictures, and not that kind of booby, could silently infect your phone, so no taps or clicks needed. Once landfall made landfall, Yes, I went there. It turned the phone into a full-on spy device. It could snoop on basically everything, recording your calls and microphones, stealing your messages, contacts, photos, and tracking your location. The spyware targeted flagship models like the Galaxy S22, S23, S24, and a Ford Flip devices too. Surprisingly, mostly in the Middle East. Hmm. This wasn't some teenager's hacker's prank either. It looks like professional spyware likely sold to governments or organizations that wanted to monitor specific targets. The good news is Samsung patched the vulnerability in April 2025, shutting the door on landfall after about seven months of stealthy spying. But it's a stark reminder to keep your phone software up to date and be cautious with unexpected messages and files. Because sometimes just viewing a picture can get you hacked, as long as companies like Samsung keep updating their phones, that shouldn't be a problem, but yeah. So that's it for this week's Dirt Report. It's a wild tech world out there, so stay tuned. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't already, check out some of the other videos that we've been doing lately. Lots of tech, lots of solar and battery information for you. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!